Hi everyone, welcome back. It's a continuation of a series of videos that I'm focusing on your understanding of vital signs. And in this part of the video, we're going to be looking at pulse or heart rate. That is because overall, vital signs are so important. And once you get that concept of vital signs, you're on your way of understanding how so many common illnesses affect us. And what can we do about our pulse when we look and we see that they're not what they're supposed to be? Are we getting palpitation? Are we, what is wrong? How do we address these issues that we're experiencing? What this video will do is answer some of those questions. I'll be right back. Welcome back to my channel. My name is uh, Dr. D. Terrence Foster. If this is the first time that you're joining me, let me just take this time to extend a very special and warm welcome to you. Wherever you are in the world, I just want to welcome you. Now, on this channel, we focus on simplifying medical issues for everyone, particularly those who may have felt left out. Uh, this is our channel. Consider subscribing. It is free and we produce a new video every week. So let's begin to talk about pulse or artery. In the last video, I, I spoke about blood pressure measurements. So make sure you check that out. I'll be leaving a link at the end in the description section of this video. Now, also in this video, when I talk about pulse or artery, I'm essentially talking about the same thing. I'll use those two terms interchangeable to mean the same thing. Now, the pulse or artery is the number of times your heart beat per minute. And this correlates very well with your systolic blood pressure. Now, pulse rate will vary also from person to person and depends on the level of activity or the health condition of the person being examined. For example, let's assume that you're about exercising or up and about shopping or whatever. Then, uh, then your pulse is more likely to be higher than when you are at rest. So that is the expectation. Now, the reason for that is that when you're up and about or exercising, your body requires oxygen-rich blood, more of that to be available to, need, to meet the needs of your activity. So your heart has to work much harder to generate the additional oxygen supply that your body needs. Now, for most healthy, normal person, um, the pulse rate range from 60 to 100, whereas a newborn will have a pulse rate that will range from 99 to 149 beats per minute. Infant ranging from 3 months to 12 months will have a pulse rate ranging from, uh, 70, ranging from 79 to 119. A young child will have a pulse rate ranging from 69 to 129. An adult, as I said, will range from about uh, 60 to 100. But if you're a well-trained athlete, your pulse rate will range from 39 to about 59. Now, women tend to have faster pulse rate than men, and that's because they're smarter. <laughs> well, not necessarily, they're just smarter, but, uh, but it's not because your pulse rate are faster. Now, a normal pulse rate is generally regular in rhythm and force, but it may be irregular. And when it's irregular, there are many things that could cause it to be irregular. For example, um, you, it could be because of um, atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib. It could be that your heart is in regular rhythm, but it's beating so fast you have an arrhythmia, or your what is called your tachycardic, meaning your heart is going so fast. Now you could also have a rate which is faster for other condition other than those. Now a faster heart rate in general is referred to or is called tachycardia. Now, this could be because of, for example, it could be an infection, you could be dehydrated, it, you could be under stress or at some level, or have a high level of anxiety. Or you may have a thyroid disorder or a thyroid disease. Other condition that leads to uh, increased pulse is anemia, fever, or you may also have a very high pain level. That will cause your pulse to increase, as well as exercising. Once you exercise, your pulse is expected to increase as well. Now, sometimes the heart can be beating much slower than it should be. In other words, the pulse is lower than what it should be. And a lot of time, this is 
related to medications such as medication commonly given or beta blockers or digoxin. And there's so many other medications that are out there that some of them are given specifically with the intention to slow the heart rate down. Uh, however, some patients, sometimes they're over-medicated, sometimes their, their condition has changed and their medication requires adjustment. So if that is happening, you need to, of course, consult your doctor. There are other conditions where your pulse could be lower than it's supposed to be, such as a congestive heart failure. Or you could have what is called a heart block where the electrical circuit of the heart is malfunctioning and therefore the impulse going through the heart is not operating the way that it should. Now, there are other conditions where your heart could also be slow. Sometimes your blood pressure could be so low that your pulse also becomes low and this is really a very bad scenario when this happens. Sometimes you may have valve disease where your heart valve is not functioning the way that it should or it's malfunctioning or to, in, in severe cases may need to be repaired or, or replaced. Now, generally speaking, your pulse should not fall below 60 beats per minute. And except, of course, as I mentioned, if you're a well-trained athlete and in excellent condition, then that's different. And one would see their pulse, as I mentioned before, between uh, 39 and 59 beats per minute. Now, how does one measure their pulse? Your pulse can be measured by firmly, but gently pressing the first and second finger against specific location on the body. Most commonly, this is done at the wrist or the neck. There's a scale for this, where if you have no pulse, it's zero. If you ha your pulse is weak, it's one plus. If it's normal, it's two plus. And if it's bounding, it's a three plus. Now, now, one of the questions that we should ask when we're measuring pulse, whether it be ours or others, is the pulse regular or is it irregular? Now, the wrist is the first place and probably the easiest place to measure the pulse, preferably on the right side, the radial artery on the right side. And you could access that by coming about one finger breadth from the crease of the wrist on the right side of the thumb side, and you could count for about 30 seconds if the pulse is regular and appears to be within normal. If it feels bouncing or fast or irregular or slow, then you would count for about one minute. The second best place to measure the pulse is at the neck and the pulse there is a carotid pulse. And it's between the trachea uh, or the windpipe and a muscle that extends from the sternum and the clavicle uh, to the um, base of the skull. And that muscle is called sternocleidal mustoid muscle. This muscle, the sternocleidoid muscle, is one of the largest muscle in that is superficially and what it does is help to rotate the neck um, in the opposite direction and also help with the flexion of the neck as well. Again to um, access the pulse you generally put your um, two fingers, um, your fingertip between the trachea and the muscle and then count uh, the number of heartbeat for 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, you could measure pulse there as well. Note that there are other locations of the body where the measurement of the pulse can be measured very accurately, such as in the arm, um, at the elbow, at the groin, behind the knees, inside the ankle, on top of the feet, or at the temple area at the face. The next video in this series will be about temperature measurements and they're significant and all those measurements can impact us with respect to our health. I encourage you all to please like, comment, and share these videos um, that you find in this channel, including this one, um, with your friends, family, and to anyone. I also encourage you to subscribe to this channel. It is free. And when you do subscribe, always remember to click the notification bell so that you will be notified each time we release a new video. Finally, remember always, let us all strive to keep a healthy mind and body. Thank you for watching.